child sex trafficker and Jeffrey Epstein, Madam Ghislaine Maxwell, just arrived at the single cushiest federal prison there is. She went from solitary confinement and on suicide watch in the Brooklyn federal lockup to Florida. There she will spend 20 years with $360 per month in the inmate commissary. She can buy Gouda spread cheese there. There's an apprentice program, education program, artwork and hobby craft program, movies, lectures on health and exercise, yoga, Pilates, weights, and as you can see from the brochure, a lot more. Now compare that to her convictions, a scheme to sexually exploit and abuse multiple minor girls with Jeffrey Epstein, conspiracy to entice minors to travel to engage in illegal sex acts, conspiracy to transport minors to participate in illegal sex acts, transporting a minor to participate in illegal sex acts, sex trafficking conspiracy, sex trafficking of a minor. Of course, it must just be a coincidence that she gets all these perks right after she stayed silent at trial about Jeffrey Epstein's pals. It is, of course, just a coincidence that she never testified about Epstein and President Trump or President Clinton or Bill Gates or more people or other people. Ben Weider is here. Uh, ben, uh, even the judge wanted her to be at a much more secure facility. It feels like something's got to be up, right? It's very funny. Uh, you know, I talked to a federal prosecutor today who, uh, from Florida who has visited clients there, and he said, you know, while I wouldn't want to be in prison, if I had to be, this is not the worst place to be. Um, you know, I think that um, it's far from, you know, theoretically far from, from friends and family, but she has uh, the opportunity to have lots of guests, lots of recreational activities. Um, and if you have to be behind bars, there, there are few places that are much better. Are we wrong to continue to question what is being done for Maxwell to keep her silent on all of Epstein's connections to the world's rich and powerful and all of his uh, connections with these young women that she helped provide? No, it's a fair question. I mean, and frankly, uh, both victims and uh, attorneys who have represented victims have called upon her and others who knew about other people involved in this to come forward. Uh, people have said, if you really feel bad about you know, the harm that, that has been done to victims, you would say who else was responsible. You'd come forward and take responsibility yourself and point the finger at other people who should be facing consequences. So I, I think it's very fair to point that out. It's very fair to wonder both why she and other people involved in the conspiracy have remained silent. Have, has your reporting come up, not necessarily with any answers to that, but any threads to pull on? Well, I mean, in the sense of why she hasn't come forward yet, I mean, there's a legal argument to be made. She's currently fighting her conviction and sentence on appeal. And so theoretically, she, she wouldn't necessarily want to give names now when, you know, she has a shot of winning on appeal and getting the whole thing thrown out. She could theoretically still... Uh, give names after the appeal if it doesn't go in her favor, and that could result in a reduction in her sentence. Uh, the problem is that if she's just giving the names of people who participated in the sex trafficking scheme, she was right under Jeffrey Epstein in the scheme. Uh, and the problem is that would be considered cooperating down rather than cooperating up. So even though the people she'd be turning on are business leaders, world leaders, people whose reputations matter, she is actually higher on the totem pole than they are. And from a criminal perspective, a prosecutor says, hmm, well, there's, the, there's, the, pro there's the, the federal prosecutor side of this. And then there's all those people who, as you point out, are rich and powerful who have a very vested interest in her staying silent. Um, Jeffrey Epstein is now silent. You can draw your own conclusions <laughs> exactly. Um, whether or not that was uh, self-induced silence or induced by someone else, do we worry about that with Ghislaine Maxwell? Well, certainly we have in the past. I mean, she was on suicide watch, as you mentioned. Yeah, right now, now, now she has got yoga and Pilates and craft time. She's on suicide watch. How does that happen? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a very interesting question. I mean, here's the thing. I mean, she gets out potentially at the age of 76. She has a life ahead of her uh, if she chooses to, especially if she's doing a lot of yoga and Pilates, she'll be in great shape. <laughs> um, so, you know, there's an incentive for her to stay in, stay silent, and be able to look forward to freedom, in, you know, you know, in 15 years from now, and, and that's something. Yeah, well, and, and the tell-all the tell -all book might make some money uh, when she gets out. Um, uh, ben, I would, I would, uh, you would be my pick to do the interview with her, that's for sure, considering how much you've covered this and what you know about it. It's good to see you, my friend. Thank you for taking the time, all right? Good to see you, too. Take right. care. We'll be right back. Thanks for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation
on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.